everyone, I'm Marissa, Chief Entomologist at the Butterfly Biosphere at Thanksgiving Point. One of the most fun parts about our job as an invertebrate animal keeper is watching our bugs eat. It's one of the behaviors that lets us know that our bugs are happy and healthy, you know, watching them actively seek out the food in their enclosure and then munch on it enthusiastically. It's also really fascinating to watch our bugs eat because they have so many differently shaped mouth parts. Uh, and, and what those shapes are can give us some clues as to the types of food that our bugs eat. You know, some of them have chewing mouth parts, some are for injecting or slurping up. Um, so it's, it's very cool to see all the different ways that our bugs can consume food items. Let's take a look at this diagram of a grasshopper's mouth parts so that we can learn about some of the different structures involved in insects eating. Um, most primitive insects started off with this type of pattern of mouth parts. Um, and then as they diversified uh, and started to utilize a lot more different food sources, those mouthpart structures changed shape so that they could specialize to different types of foods. So as we look at, at this diagram, we're gonna see four different mouth parts we're gonna learn today. So first we'll start with the labrum. So that's kind of like the upper lip, it's a plate that kind of keeps the food inside of their mouth. Then we have the mandibles, which are kind of like the teeth of the insect. So instead of chewing up and down like our jaws do, they actually chew side to side and horizontally. Then we have the maxillae, and these kind of act like the tongue um, for food manipulation and also some sensory pickup. Um, so it kind of keeps the food moving around, that way they can chew it. And then finally we have the labium, which is kind of like a, the lower lip or the back plate that's holding the food inside. And it also does a little bit of, um, of sensory pickup. You'll see different palps attached to some of our insect mouths so that they can taste things before they bite them. Okay, so let's get to the fun stuff, actually feeding our bugs. Today we're going to be feeding scavengers, herbivores, and carnivores. So starting with scavengers, sometimes we also call these decomposers. These are some of nature's recyclers. They like to eat the dead bodies of plants and animals, which are very rich in organic material. And so they're, they're part of this process where um, these animals like roaches and millipedes and isopods will break those decaying materials down into smaller pieces so that fungi and bacteria can continue to break those down and release nutrients back into the soil. That way plants can uptake them um, and get that energy cycling through the ecosystem again. So here we have some giant cave cockroaches. These range throughout the jungles of South America. Um, you can usually find them in the leaf litter on the forest floor or in caves on the walls. They're great climbers. And these are demonstrating those chewing mouth parts. So very similar to the grasshopper mouth parts that we looked at. Um, you can really see the palps on their maxillae and their labium um, that are tasting that apple um, as they're chewing on it. So they're identifying that as a food source. And here we can see two cockroach friends. Um, one is drinking the water droplets off of his friend's backs. And so you can, you can see also the great movement in the mouth parts as that's happening. So here we have some dairy cow isopods. And isopods are a close cousin of the bugs that you like to call pill bugs or roly polies or potato bugs. They get a lot of common names because generally you can find these all around the world. Um, most of these isopods originated in like Europe and the Mediterranean and then through agriculture have spread uh, to pretty much every continent around the world. Um, so these guys are, are white with black spots, so we call them dairy cow isopods. Their substrate is much of their food, so it's got compost soil, leaf material, and um, rotting wood all mixed up in the substrate. And then we also supplement with fresh produce. Um, and dog food to give them some protein as well. So we can see these guys uh, munching on some apple and cucumber in this enclosure. So these isopods are not insects. They don't have those uh, six legs and three body parts, um, but they do have chewing mouth parts uh, like we were talking about, pretty similar to the grasshopper mouth parts. There's a couple extra pieces in there, but ultimately a lot of pieces moving together to shred the material that they're chewing on. So next we're gonna feed some of our herbivores. These are animals that eat materials like leaf materials, fruits and vegetables. It includes nectar and pollen feeders. Uh, and so in this set of bugs that we're about to feed, we're gonna see chewing mouth parts, sucking mouth parts, and lapping mouth parts. So here we have some Australian prickly walking sticks. They come from Australia and they eat a variety of vegetations. 
So you'll sometimes see ours eating eucalyptus or rose or oak. Uh, and right now these guys are demonstrating chewing mouth parts. And what you'll notice if we look closer is that um, the way that their mouth parts are oriented, they need to chew on the leaf starting from the edge. So you're gonna see them chewing in kind of a vertical pattern um, along that leaf edge. And so as they um, walk onto a plant, their antennae and the palps along the sides of their mouth part are going to be tasting the plant, picking up chemical cues from it. And so that lets them know, this is my host plant. Um, and then they begin the, the biting process and, and starting to chew that plant. So right here we have a Grecian shoemaker butterfly and he is feeding on a banana in our conservatory. So butterfly mouth parts are very specialized. They, they drink through a straw-like mouth part called a proboscis. Um, and that's actually the maxillae that has uh, changed its shape to form a straw. And it's not a single a mouth part, it's actually both sides of the maxillae that fit together to form that straw. Um, if you ever see our butterflies emerging inside of the emergence chambers, when they come out of their chrysalis, you'll see them flexing those two halves of that proboscis to, to get the blood flowing through them and get their shape proper um, and able to fit together so that now they can drink fluids through that proboscis. Um, and I know for butterfly diets, we think of flowers, butterflies like nectar, but most of the butterflies in our conservatory are tropical. And so they actually like to feed on tree sap and rotting fruits and even animal poop are, are some of the uh, additional forms of diet that our butterflies like to feed on. So here we have a giant stag beetle, which you can find in Southeast Asia. And as adults, these beetles feed on rotting fruits. So his mandibles are very obvious. They're these enlarged mandibles that the males will use to fight with other males um, to compete for the affections of female beetles. Um, they're also useful in breaking open the tough skins of these fruits that they might want to feed on. Um, so we can see some of the palps um, of the labrum and the maxillae. And what he's also displaying are two brush-like mouth parts called the galea. And they're kind of like paint brushes. And what he's doing is he's sweeping the juicy fruit um, and then tucking it into his mouth and absorbing that nutrients and bringing that back out. So it's important for us to understand that it would be harder for him to feed on a hard fruit like an apple um, and so we need to offer things like rotting bananas and oranges or things like mangoes would be his favorite foods to eat. And finally, we're going to feed our carnivores. So these are the meat eaters. So these bugs are gonna be eating mostly other invertebrates and some of them like our Goliath bird eating tarantula are big enough to catch small vertebrate animals like mice or baby birds um, or lizards. So let's get to it. So we have our giant Asian mantis as our first carnivore that we're feeding, and so this is a demonstration of chewing mouth parts. Now mantids are really cool. Um, over time, they have evolved so that their front pair of legs are no longer legs used just for walking around. They're actually raptorial claws, and so when they're hunting, they use those to grab their prey really quickly. Um, in less time than it takes for us to blink is how quickly they can grab their prey. And all the spines on the insides of those arms hold it still, and then they can use their chewing mouth parts to just devour it kind of like a hamburger. So as we're watching this guy eat, it's really obvious to see the labrum that's on top. You can see it kind of moving forward um, as the top of the mouth parts. And then the black pieces on the sides are the mandibles. So those are doing a lot of the chewing and slicing sideways. And we can also see a pair of palps that are kind of helping manipulate that cricket um, as he's looking for better angles to chew on it. Okay, so I have a cave clawed scorpion with us. And um, I think scorpions have some of the coolest mouth parts in all the invertebrate world. So um, not being insects, we're definitely seeing something different from the mouth parts we've been talking about. Um, scorpions have what we call chelicera. Now in tarantulas, those are the big fangs, but in scorpions, they're actually these little tiny claws like right above their oral cavity. And so those 
pull their food into little pieces and they have to externally digest their food so they can't actually chew their food as they pull those pieces apart and they stick them in that cavity they're going to drool on it which is going to pre-digest it and then they're actually going to be able to slurp it into their mouth so as we watched this guy hunt um, he's got his claws open. He's ready for anything to touch him. It's hard to imagine because we you don't usually see scorpions up close, but they have a lot of very sensitive hairs on those pedipalps or their claws. And as soon as something touches those hairs, they know to catch that um, and hold it down. And this scorpion's claws are so strong, we notice he doesn't even feel the need to use his venom to incapacitate his prey. He's just holding it down with his claws and then pulling it apart with his chelicery. So here we have some two-spotted assassin bug juveniles. We keep our adults on exhibit. Um, and so these are, are part of the true bug order, which are pretty characteristically identified by the presence of a rostrum, or like a beak at the front um, of their nose. And that rostrum is made up of a combination of the mandibles and the maxillae to create this piercing, sucking mouth part form. Um, so these are predators, and we can see that they're feeding on isopods and crickets. And so they'll stab that rostrum into their prey item, and they're going to inject a little bit of saliva. Um, it's a venom, so it's partially killing that prey item, and it's also pre-digesting it, and then they can slurp up those juices through that rostrum as well. Thanks so much for joining us as we feed all of our bugs and keep them healthy. If you like this video, like it, subscribe so you can see more videos about our bugs here at the Butterfly Biosphere, and share it with your friends so they can join in the fun. Thanks, and see you next time.